in the first lesson we looked at um, introduced um, the idea of dystopian settings and also started to think a little bit about the the kind of common themes or the typical themes uh, that are dealt with in dystopia the seven the seven themes you go think about that table that you completed we're now going to consider look a bit more closely at a particular method that writers use and uh, this is something that uh, will also feature a dystopian uh, description of dystopian settings I'm now going to read the opening of the maze runner to you um, and then I'm going to just draw attention to certain things that the writer's done um, as a lead into the next um, the next activity okay so what we're looking at here is that the you know a method or methods that uh, writers of dystopian fiction might use when describing setting okay he began his new life standing up surrounded by cold darkness and stale dusty air metal ground against metal a lurching shudder shook the floor beneath him. He fell down at the sudden movement and shuffled backwards on his hands and feet, drops of sweat beading on his forehead, despite the cool air. His back struck a hard metal wall. He slid along it until he hit the corner of the room. Sinking to the floor, he pulled his legs up tight against his body, hoping his eyes would soon adjust. With another jolt, the room jerked upwards like an old lift in a mine shaft. Harsh sounds of chains and pulleys, like the workings of an ancient steel factory, echoed through the room, bouncing off the walls with a hollow, tinny whine. The lightless lift swayed back and forth as it ascended, turning the boy's stomach sour with nausea. A smell like burnt oil invaded his sense, making him feel worse. He wanted to cry, but no tears came. He could only sit, alone, waiting. OK, so... Let's have a little look at the description here. So he's in a lift um, and he's got metal grinding against metal. We've got sound of a sound described there, lurching shudder, um, more there's movement, so sense of touch. He fell down the sudden movement, shuffled backwards, um, got sweat, got the physical effect on him. His back struck a hard metal wall, got more metal again here. Um, he's in a room, um, sinking to the floor. Let's have a look. It sounded a bit like an old lift. Then he hears chains and pulleys, um, echoes like a steel factory, whine, lots of noise here, isn't there? And then again, we get a reference to his how, what the effect on him is making him feel sick. And he could smell sort of burnt oil or something like that. OK, so in terms of what's actually been described here, it's one of the features of this description. OK, it's to do with the place that he's in. He's in a, he's in a lift. But um, it's, it's, it's kind of this sense of imprisonment. Um, it sounds like he's, you know, he's trapped and he's enclosed and there's no escape. And that sense of imprisonment is often a feature of dystopian stories. Um, the world that these people in has, uh, has no way out. There's, there's no escape. Um, those who will remember the giver will know that the, um, the community they're in, there is no no way out of it or there are ways out of it but we discover that the way out of it is is death so there's this sense of being trapped in a certain place in George Orwell's 1984 Winston Smith the main protagonist is in a in a world he can't escape from um, even his thoughts are being monitored he's everything is um, he's kind of trapped um, in a in a world that he doesn't understand and he can't see who's controlling it and um, there seems to be no escape from from it physically or even psychologically he's kind of trapped uh, in, in physically and in his head as well um, so think about the hunger games as well they're trapped aren't they they're in they're in these those communities and uh, the only way out or the only way to get any kind of freedom is to to win the win the hunger games um, so this sense of being imprisoned or enclosed or entrapped or something like that is a, is a, bit, a significant feature of, of the setting of a dystopian uh, story. Right. We're going to look at this poem called Nettles by Vernon Scannell. And the reason we're going to look at it is just to sort of, de sort of develop uh, and build on... Um, some of the kind of points that are made in relation to the Hunger Games extract. So the Hunger Games extract, there's a sense of, 
uh, repeated description that creates a sense of imprisonment. OK, so this idea of in, uh, describing a dystopia um, uh, as though it is in uh, there's a sense of imprisonment is something we're going to be working on. So we're going to look at this poem and a particular feature of it, uh, and then we're going to undertake a task ourselves. Here we go. Um, my son, aged three, fell in the nettle bed. Bed seemed a curious name for those green spears, that regiment of spite behind the shed. It was no place for rest. With sobs and tears, the boy came seeking comfort, and I saw white blisters beaded on his tender skin. We soothed him till his pain was not so raw. At last, he offered us a watery grin. And then I took my billhook, honed the blade, and went outside and slashed in fury with it till not a nettle in that fierce parade stood upright any more. And then I lit a funeral pyre to burn the fallen dead. But in two weeks, the busy sun and rain had called up tall recruits behind the shed. My son would often feel sharp wounds again. So, um, nothing to do with imprisonment here, but um, you'll notice that I've highlighted in green certain words and phrases, um, just to tell you that the word uh, bill hook is like a bit like a machete okay um used to be used i can remember uh, i remember my father used to use one to chop wood um it's got kind of a bit of a hook on the end you can sort of pull things with it as well after you've chopped things it can be used to sort of cut you know cut down things um they're not very common nowadays okay but it's a kind of it's a bit, bit like a weapon really in some respects so um, we've I've highlighted green spears, regiment, billhook, fierce parade, the fallen dead, and tall recruits. Now we're not going to just spend much time on this poem itself. Uh, it's a poem which um, describes the relationship between as a father's sort of point of view, and he's looking at uh, looking at his son and how he kind of fears for him, but he has to let him, you know, at some point he has to let his son sort of go and learn from his mistake, and he can't necessarily come out and save him all the time. Um, but he can, you know, and you can't. It's about this sort of sense of parent not being able to always protect their, their child, and in this case, it's against nettles. But he describes the nettles as though they are. Um, he uses military imagery, doesn't he? Spears, regiment, billhook, which is a machete, parade, the fallen dead, tall recruits, are all words that come from the world of um, of war, um, of the army, of soldiers, and he's used that. Um, what, he, what he's done is use an extended metaphor. So the name we give to uh, repeated description with a kind of common theme. So we would say that these he's used a lexical field of um, military terms or military imagery in order to create an extended metaphor um, to describe uh, the way he feels about those nettles, which seem to be uh, a kind of threat to his son and something that he can't really protect him protect him from and it makes him think about the fact that he might not be able to protect him for his whole life because of course the son has to grow up and uh, and take his own um, take his own chances in life doesn't he okay but our, for, for our purposes it's the repeated use those words in green of um, military imagery that um, makes uh, an extended metaphor so he's describing this, this, the nettles as though they're spears he kind of extends that, doesn't he? Um, he uses the metaphor of green spears to describe the nettles. He says they're green spears, but then he extends that idea of them being spears by using words like regiment, billhook, etc. So he extends the metaphor into an extended metaphor. Okay, so here is a, uh, an image, uh, it's a random image of a prison. Uh, I think it's uh, from America. Okay, so um, I'm putting the case to you that um, dystopia deals with the sense of imprisonment. They're not literally in prison, but they're, the world is, they're kind of trapped in their world in some way that makes it feel or have similar qualities to a prison. And we've been looking at uh, the way that the opening of uh, the Maze Runner uh, created that kind of sense of confinement or imprisonment. Um, and then we looked at the use of an extended metaphor in the poem Nettles. What we're going to do now is try and combine those two things. Um, and what I'd like you to do is um, you're going to um, end up that the task is for you to write an extended description um, describing school as though it is a prison. 
okay? Um, so the first thing I want you to do is to mind map. So create a mind map of as many associations with prison as you possibly can. Here are some examples. Um, locks, keys, solitary confinement, serving a sentence, and go on and on. Maybe aim for about 20 things, sort of words and phrases connected to prison, you know, the way it physically looks, what, what, it, what it has inside it, the way you might feel when you're there, all those sorts of things. OK. And then when you've done that, um, you're going to then uh, write uh, a long paragraph, an extended paragraph, where you write about life in school as though it's a prison. And here's a line to get you going. So um, here's a first line. If you need it, you don't have to use this line, um, but it's, it might get you going if you're not sure how to start. School is a prison. We come to school to serve our sentence. OK, so have that as a start. Once you've, so you've produced your mind map, you've got lots of words and phrases connected to um, that you associate with prison. And then you're going to try and write about school life um, using um, using as many of those terms as you can. Um, but start off with the, th the first statement you must have is that school is a prison. So you're, you're using a metaphor there, aren't you? You've said school is a prison. So school has become a prison. You've described school by using a metaphor of it being a prison. OK, and then you're going to then extend that metaphor by using lots of continual references to prison uh, when you describe what it's like being in school. OK. Um, all right. When you've completed the um, school is a prison. Um, extended metaphor uh, piece of writing. Um, here's a, another task that you can do to follow that up. Um, so it's it's using the same idea. So previously we had school described as that was a prison. Um, below uh, on this we have a list of um, other things: uh, the ocean, Disneyland, plumbing, a bag of marbles, a tree, a journey, a plant, a garden. Can you think of something? That you could describe um, as though it is one of those items in the list. For example, um, off the top of my head, if you said, say, a bag of marbles and you thought, hmm, um, it reminds you, I know, I'll describe the snake pit at Norwich, Norwich Football Club, if you're familiar with, uh, with Norwich, the snake pit is the kind of noisy, loud part of the ground. Um, and so what you could do is then mind map as many things as you can to do with marbles, um, different colours, shapes, the noise they make. Um, think about the kind of the, the, the sort of glisten that they have and the sun shining on them, etc, etc. And produce a big mind map and then describe the snake pit at Norwich um, using the ideas that you have for a bag of marbles. Um, or you could take, um, take a garden. Um, and perhaps you could describe a classroom as a garden um, or your family as a garden. And so you would then mind map a garden as many things you can think of that are in a garden, um, what a garden looks like, um, the sounds you might um, hear in a garden, the smells, go through all the senses, um, think about experiences you can have in a garden and then describe your the classroom or a family. Or whatever it is else you decide uh, you could uh, you describe as a garden, and uh, and then write your extended description based on one of those. Okay.